Mr. Weber, on behalf of my fault, I will pay for the representative room that uh, you have just delivered a very comprehensive lecture on the status of Gandhi studies in India as well as the following of Gandhi and how we are keeping the legacy of Gandhi in India. I think all of us are quite thrilled about it because now we will, when we go back, we will see that how in the West someone is so committed coming to India for the last more than 30 years. He started coming in 1979 as a scholar and still he is so enthusiastic about his research and about his study that he came all the way straight. He did not go anywhere but to Savaranti Ashram, but to Kota University, or to anywhere where he can talk about Gandhi, he can see Gandhian studies, he can do some research on Gandhi. So this type of commitment has made him such a great scholar. And when we are teaching in our classes, I am teaching Gandhian classes in the last 30 years, and I think that in all over the country, no Gandhian course is complete without referring to his studies on Gandhi. So we are all fortunate that he has come here and shared his view about the Gandhi studies in the country. Now I think his lecture was very clear, his objective was very clear, that he wanted to show that what is the scholarship of Gandhi in India and in abroad is to what is the status of that scholarship? And secondly, what is the status of action on Gandhi's ideas? Whether we are doing justice to Gandhi and his ideas, Gandhi as a person, Gandhi as an activist, what we are doing, there are many organizations which are working, trying to emulate what Gandhi has done, trying to follow Gandhi's footstep. So what is the status of that? And secondly, if we concentrate ourselves on the Gandhian ideas, then how the research on Gandhi is being done. Although he is not very enthusiastic about it, as a scholar, he is critical, and that is very good for us because we can find certain things from his lecture and we can improvise if we can do it in the right manner. But let me share something what he has done. All of us know that Gandhi is something, a unique feature of what he has uh, said, I think we should see it in a particular context. I think Gandhi is such a unique feature that he is the only person in the human history whose personality and ideas are overlapping. No other, in, if you go to any, anywhere, in the whole world, no centers or institutions or research, normally speaking, are created for one person. We know the great uh, academician Karl Marx. When we talk of Karl Marx, I don't find any institution named after Karl Marx, what he did, how he behaved, what was his role. We have thousands of institutes, thousands of studies, courses on Marxian approach, Marxist approach, communist approach, institute of communism, Marxism, Marxism, many other things. Gandhi is the only person about which there are so many institutes, they are called Gandhian Institute, Institute of Gandhi Studies, Institute of Gandhi, Gandhi Institute of Studies, something like that. So in one way or other way, he is like a religious preacher. It is only religious preachers who have established religions like Christ, Muhammad, Buddha, Mahavi. We can have some centers or some universities or some types of universities named after Vardhaman Mahavi. So such persons who are great epoch makers of the world. We donate our institutes, we name our institutes in the name of those great persons and Gandhi belongs to that particular category. Now if we consider this, that Gandhi belongs to that particular category, which is what I call great pathfinders, great establishment, establishing great persons, establishing different regions. 
Then the question arises that how we can critically analyze his ideas. Because reverence takes over our critical faculties. In India, this is a very important factor. As you know, you are coming here for the last 20 years. It is very difficult to come out of this reverence and start critically analyzing something. I feel that it is necessary, but it is difficult. Then we have to talk about two different levels. At the intellectual level, we can do this, and we are doing this. There are some scholars, although you have just mentioned that now the tendency is to criticize Gandhi so that your books can sell, and not criticizing on his ideas, but trying to criticize his way of life and trying to find out something which is very small thing, but you want to make it, blow it over so that your books can sell. At the intellectual level, in the universities, in the academies, we have this uh, duty to critically analyze what Gandhi has done. But when we go in the society, then it is very difficult to talk about Gandhi in a critical manner. Because the whole society is so overwhelmed by his personality that he was born here, single-handedly he created a movement and we got freedom. So a person who has done this, and we have many persons, although the number is now shrinking, who have seen Gandhi in action, who have seen him as a person. And that is why, and everybody knows about this, when Einstein has said that generations to come will scarcely believe that such a person in bone and flesh ever walked on earth. Then what was the reason? The reason was like George Bernard Shaw has said about him, and I think many others have said, if Christ would have been alive today, he would have been like this man. So this is a great, what we can, what we can tribute to such a person. If the community at large believes in such things, great men of this century of the humanity like Einstein and John Bernard, they pay such tribute to such a person. How can we say that we will in analyze it critically? Because his personality is so overwhelming. So his ideas are left behind. So that is the first major question which arises while discussing Gandhi, whether we should talk about his personality or we should talk about his ideas. In Karl Marx, there is no such problem because no one talks about his personality. Everybody talks about his ideas and how these ideas were implemented in certain areas, in certain countries. And the implementation part can always be critically examined. So we have no problem. We have no problem about all the great ideas given, like Plato, Aristotle, Einstein, everybody, Newton. We can always discuss at length the relevance of the idea, the inner inconsistencies of the idea, the new facts which have emerged and which have changed, the basic assumptions which were given by those thinkers. So this is there. But in India and with Gandhi, which is a unique personality, where personality takes over and it overwhelms the ideas which he has given. Now in this, Gandhi has also helped us in the manner, as you know, that he has written that I am not built for academic writings. Action is my domain. When I am not here, then only my action will speak. And if you are Gandhian or you want to follow me, then follow my action, not my words. You should burn all my books, all what I have written with me. My actions will speak for themselves. Now this type of feeling which he has given, it shows that we should not study as at the level of ideas. We should try to emulate it. And that is what, gratefully, what happens that in India, these two form his ideas and his action, they are not intermingling with each other, they are giving two different directions. One of the sections of society took this very seriously, and that is the larger section, which has larger say in decision making. They thought, because most of them were with Mahatma Gandhi, and they viewed Gandhi as the person who led us to freedom. So what he did, we should evaluate that. That is what the basic assumption of most of the Indians, that he started wearing Khadi, arguing out why Khadi is important, so all of us should wear Khadi. He started arguing that we should earn our own bread, so Charkha is a must, it should be daily worship for ourselves. He started doing some upwas, 
or non-violent conflict, non-violent protest, then we should start doing non-violent protest. So this is one larger section of the society which followed his actions in this manner. But there is a major, major problem while you are not talking about the decline in legal action. The major problem is the context is totally changed. When Gandhi was here, the Gandhi is normally, I mean today, all over the world is considered as a philosopher of protest. Because when Gandhi was there, on the whole of his life, he protested against so many things. Like he protested against British rule, he protested against the social evils, he protested against so many other things, against uh, materialism, he protested against so many other things. So he is considered, and his protest was a unique thing, which he himself did, as you know, that when he started his protest movement in South Africa, he called it passive resistance. He himself has this written there. You know about in Hindu Swaraj, the chapter is called the passive resistance. But later on, he himself realized that his way of protesting is not pro should not be called passive resistance. It is active, it is resistant, but it is non-violent. So there should be a new word which should be coined, and then they coined Satyagraha. Now, in the whole world today, when everywhere and whenever there is, a, there is an incident of non-violent protest, we say it is Satyagraha. Now, it may be not technically Satyagraha because Satyagraha technically is very different. But largely speaking, when we say that this is the major thing, how we can conceptualize a particular event, then we say this is a non-violent non -violent struggle, so it, is, it has to be Satyagraha, some sort of Satyagraha. Just, just, uh, just last year, we, uh, or two years back, we had so much, so much uprising in the Arab world, and we say these, all these, what were these? These were Satyagraha. The decline, the demise of whole Soviet communist uh, epoch, we say what was that? That was totally Satyagraha. What South Africa, how did it gain freedom? We say it was because of Satyagraha. And those who struggled there, fought for their countries, they also bowed to Gandhi's uh, ideas. And that is why we see that they, all of them who followed in the last 70 years, 60 years, this non violent struggle, they always remember Gandhi as the pioneer, as their forefather. So the question is that whenever Gandhi created a new form of protest in the world, and that he implemented very successfully. But that the context was a colonial context. Now the context is changed. The government which came into power after 1947, it claimed to be following Gandhi ideas. Not Gandhi ideas, but at least it had great reverence for Gandhi. They may say, like Nehru had differences with Gandhi, and he said that because now we are in power, we want to develop our country, we want to compete with the world, so we require a different type of model of development, 